You're listening to episode 38 of the Master Your Mind, Business, and Life podcast. I have to say that when I said episode 38, I got the chills. (laughs) For 38 weeks straight, you've joined me on this wildly amazing journey filled with thought-provoking conversations, which not only wows me, but it humbles me. In all honesty, and I mean, this is a major truth bomb. This is probably the most consistent I've been with anything on a personal business slash passion level. I've helped other business owners kick some butt, and I've held them accountable to following their plan, but I've been the queen of excuses when it comes to mine. My biggest excuse was that working on other people's business took up all of my energy and time, so I had none left to give to my own. And while that was 100% true, it was still an excuse. In the past year, I've become more committed to personal and professional growth. And in one month, one month, I have increased my digital footprint by 427%. And in two months, it's been an overall of 1,276%. These, my friends, are not exaggerated numbers. I have the proof to back it up. The thing is, I didn't spend a lot of money doing this. In fact, I didn't spend any money. It was all organic. In this week's episode, I'm opening up my vaults of strategies and sliding you a few tips, tricks, and wisdom nuggets that have helped my business grow online and, if implemented, might help yours grow too. So, you ready to learn? You know what to do. Tune in, turn it up, let's go. You're listening to Master Your Mind, Business and Life. Conversations with everyday world shifters, truth seekers, and rule breakers. Here's your host, Lauren Smith. Hey everyone, it's Lauren Smith. Welcome back to another episode. Now, I am always open about my failures and success and business, but what people actually pay me for are my strategies. Most of my strategies revolve around social media and digital marketing, and these strategies have helped brands all over the world grow online. And as I mentioned earlier, the funny part is, is that I really skimped on implementing my own strategies for my own brand up until about a year ago. Now, when I became more intentional about my grand growth, I've been crushing milestones, and I'm not saying that lightly. I mentioned at the beginning, I, in one month, I increased one of my digital footprints by 427%. And that's just on one platform. And the growth to my website increased by 42% as a result of that, which is actually very huge. Four to five years ago, you probably would have guessed that this platform was Facebook. And today, you might be like most other brands and think that it's Instagram. It's on many people's scopes when it comes to getting ideas and planning, but it's not so much on the scopes of business owners. At least, not as many businesses are taking advantage of it as they should. With 250 million monthly users, users who use this platform are twice as likely to say that their time on this platform was well spent. And this platform, ladies and gentlemen, is Pinterest. Now, I'm going to drop some stats on you real quick before we dive into how I found Pinterest valuable and how you can use it to up your social media slash digital game. Okay, you ready? According to a study, Pinterest commissioned to better understand its American women users aged 25 to 54... 53% of those women said that they use Facebook to plan these types of life moments compared to 44% who use Instagram to do it. So to clarify what a life moment is, think wedding, baby shower, birthday parties, new house, recipes, etc. Now, 59% of millennials have discovered new products by using Pinterest. That puts the platform right on par with Instagram as far as product discovery goes. And that, I think, is super impressive given that Instagram has four times as many users as Pinterest. Interesting, right? Now, this is a stat that I love so hard. 90% of weekly users use Pinterest to make purchase decisions. 90 freaking percent. 
huge. Okay, so if by now you're a business owner or you're building a brand in any way, your ears may have perked up, but you probably also have a lot of questions. So let's go ahead and start with the most basic one. Is Pinterest right for me? Pinterest is most beneficial for people who sell an online product or service, even if you're blogging, actually, especially if you're blogging, you should consider implementing Pinterest into your marketing scope. Now, this could simply be dedicating a board on your personal page, um, specifically for your business, or maybe after today's episode, you'll be inspired to start up, revamp, or simply dedicate more time to your brand's account. Whatever it might look like for you, the fact that users are using Pinterest like a search engine, like Google, means that this is a fast track way to get your content, products, and services in the front of the people who are actually looking for them. Now, if you have a super niched audience, like maybe you're a photographer in a small town and you might be listening to this today and think, okay, well, Pinterest has no purpose to me unless I can reach my local audience. I get you, but just hear me out, okay? Do you realize how many people go to Pinterest for color palette ideas for their family pictures of what they should all wear or ideas for their baby's first uh, birthday party cake smash? Or what about those engagement photos? Everyone's always looking for inspiration. What if your ideal client is searching Pinterest ideas for their next family photo shoot and ends up finding you, their local photographer? Or maybe they've already booked with you and they're looking at your boards for their next inspiration. Okay, and really, let's, let's just go down this rabbit hole real quick. What is so wrong with a person who is not in your local area finding your work and saving it for inspiration? Maybe they love the pose or the theme. Is being a sor- source of inspiration not enough? Not to mention that when they're saving your photos that are linked to your blog and website, that's giving that post or page more traffic to your website and raising awareness is not a bad thing in my book. Okay. So I really think that even in the most niche little places, you might be able to find a spot for Pinterest in your marketing scope. Now, the next question you might have is what should I be pinning? Sharing your own content is just as important as sharing your own. A client who owned a baby bedding company compiled boards for nursery themes, which is a great idea. From actual themes like nautical nursery to a princess nursery to color palettes such as navy and red nursery. They used their own products. These were the main featured products, but they then featured other nursery products like lighting, rugs, furniture that aligns with theirs and fills the boards to expand their reach. Now, when I became more intentional with my boards, I deleted a lot of things that were just no longer relevant to me or boards that I could have condensed. I mean, really, we don't need four different types of quote boards, right? So when I became more intentional, I wrote out topics that I wanted to write about or that I already do write about, speak about, And even once I really just like to research because I'm a researcher, that's really, really what I love to do. So I, when I wrote out these boards, they included topics like astrology, business tips and tricks, crystals and chakra cleansing, mindfulness and meditation, numerology, podcast, positive quotes, self-care, spiritual awakening. And then I had already had a few other boards that just expand into my personal interests. Because my brand is an extension of myself, it's okay for my Pinterest boards to also have boards that are tailored to my interests, such as organization tips, home office design, um, travel tips and tricks, uh, bucket list, personal style. And I even have a couple, or actually have one DIY board. So one for just all my DIY ideas. The cool thing is Pinterest now allows video pins. So this is just another way to repurpose content, right? I bet if you're sitting here listening and you're like, okay, now we understand Pinterest is great. You get traffic from it. I'm going to see how I can, you know, implement it into my marketing scope. I know the real question is how in the actual bleep 
did you grow your Pinterest so fast and by only spending 15 to 20 minutes on it weekly? Okay, here's my little trick. I am scheduling posts to go out about four to six times a day. That feels like a lot, I know. But these pins range from my own content to content that fills my boards. When I write a blog, I create two to three different Pinterest images for it. Um, And I create these in Canva, which I'll link in the episode notes. It's a free tool with templates that you can use to create a wide range of graphics, both for social media and for print. So the reason that I use multiple images is because we all know that imagery appeals to different people in various ways. I'm also pinning these to all relevant boards, not just one board, any board that it's relevant to. So if something fits in my self-care board, but it's also focused around mindfulness, I'm going to pin it to both boards. In my captions, I'm using hashtags just like I do on Instagram, except for I aim for about 10 and I make them very generic like hashtag mindfulness, hashtag mindful, hashtag self-care, hashtag self-love, hashtag self-care habits, etc. And yes, I make sure everything I pin links back to my website even if I organically load a pin, if I just upload it straight from my computer, I make sure it links to my website. I always want that traffic to go back to my website. Now, I mentioned that I've been scheduling pins four to six times a day for various times. What I'm doing is I'm actually scheduling these all on a Sunday. I do little Sunday activities for my business every Sunday, which allows me to take Fridays off and, you know, have four day a week. But anyways, (laughs) um, but what Pinterest, uh, Pinterest has its own scheduler. You can do that. But I have been using a tool and this tool has exploded my Pinterest growth. And that is called Tailwind. Tailwind is a marketing application created specifically for Pinterest and Instagram. It's great for bloggers, online businesses, and enterprises with online shops. This tool can easily simplify the process involved in social media marketing. Now, I haven't tried Tailwind for Instagram yet. I've been focusing my Pinterest efforts before I take on another platform using this tool. But if you've tried it out before me, you know, go ahead and let me know what your experience is with Tailwind on Instagram. One of my favorite things about Tailwind, besides being able to schedule pins, is that I can post pins to tribes. Tailwind describes their tribes as like-minded people in your niche to share relevant content and grow your reach. Essentially, when you join a tribe, you can share your content within them and they also share your content. So some tribes also have rules such as vertical pins only or for every one pin that you post, you have to share a post of another person within the tribe. It's really what makes a tribe go. Another benefit of tribes is that you can find an abundance of content to schedule for your own board. So you don't even really have to search, just all right there. I posted a photo which was linked to my Instagram story covers, which is a free download that's available on my laurensmithbiz.com website. So I posted this into a tribe called Business Boss Babes. The post gained nearly five thousand repins and reach and had a reach of 190,000 as a result of sharing this directly into that tribe. Now, not all of the repins came from that tribe. Of course, it was a ripple effect and it was incredible. But I posted that same pin organically to Pinterest without using tribes or tailwind at all. And it only received four pins and a total reach of 1,200. So you can really see how Tailwind helps when you're just putting your content into a targeted community. So they also have other features that help you know when's the best time to schedule your post, analytics, and some more things. But um, it's a really cool platform. Tailwind does have a free one-month trial. So if you use my link, which I've linked into this week's episode notes on mindbizlife.com, you get another month free when you upgrade to the paid edition. So definitely take advantage of that. And then you can share your link with other people and keep keep giving the gift of giving. I don't pay for many programs anymore, but 
Tailwind is one I don't see myself breaking up with anytime soon. And you know, guys, I know that adding a new platform to your marketing efforts is intimidating, but if you had the opportunity to grow your business by, you know, online with only 20 minutes every week, wouldn't you try it? I mean, Pinterest is overlooked when it comes to digital marketing plans, but if you're selling physical or digital products, writing blogs, producing vlogs, which are video blogs, uh, producing podcasts, or heck, even if you have a service, consider putting this into your marketing plan. So let's go ahead and break this down into little bite-sized steps so you know what the main things to focus on in Pinterest ongoing, okay? Before you do anything, I want you to get real clear about what you're doing and what your goals are. Don't even waste your time on Pinterest for your business If you don't have a plan, how much time are you dedicating on Pinterest? What's your goals? What are your milestones? How are you tracking your performance? What's most important to you? Is it website clicks? Is it repins? Remember, intention is key. You've got to have a strategy for this before you just dive in and do it all willy nilly. I do have a social media strategy template that you can snag on my website, laurensmithviz.com. I'll also link it into this week's episode notes. So write an easy for you, kind of walk through what your strategy should look like. You can just write it out yourself. Boom, saves you time. So next, once you've had it all laid out of what your strategy is, I want you to set up your complete profile and make sure you verify your business website because you want to track accurate traffic to your website, right? Then you're going to write down about 10 topics that align with your brand. And these will become your Pinterest boards. You can sub write categories under that that fall into the main topic, and these will be your pins. I always say to think of Pinterest like a filing cabinet. The cabinet itself is Pinterest. The folders within the cabinet are like Pinterest boards, and the files within the folders are Pinterest pins. Now, when I go to your filing cabinet, I want to be able to open it up and know exactly what I'm going to find or likely to find within each folder. Similarly, when I go to Pinterest, I'm going to look at your board names and know exactly what's in each one. So you got to keep it organized when you're starting to fill up those boards. Once you have your boards created, you got to pin some content, right? (laughs) So there are these Pinterest extensions that you can load into your browser to make it easy to pin from different websites, even your own. If you have blogs that don't have vertical images in them, create your own using Canva, load them organically into Pinterest, and then link them to your website. The best thing to do would be to start implementing those Pinterest images into your blogs so people, people can easily... Uh, pin them as well. And don't forget your hashtags and captions. And if you really want to level up that presence, get Tailwind. I haven't even mastered the tool yet. In fact, I would probably consider myself a novice at it, but I am telling you, as someone who has professionally worked in social media marketing for eight years, this tool is the real deal for growth. Now, I know that this is a lot of information, and if you're driving or cooking or you just don't have time to take notes right now on this episode, don't worry. I've outlined it all on this week's episode notes on mindbizlife.com. You'll also find links to the social media template, Canva, and my special link to Tailwind, which gets you a free month. Now, you guys asked me for more solo episodes, more business episodes as well. So I'll consider today's episodes a two birds, one stone kind of day. I'm going to be sure I produce at least one solo episode per month ongoing, but to help hold me accountable, I would love your help. Write me an email, send me a text if you have my number, shoot me a message on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, wherever, and let me know what you're struggling with. Um, Or even a topic that you want more information on. If it's something that I can cover solo, I will. And if it's beyond me, you know, I'll bring in an expert. I guess the cool thing about being a host of a podcast is I can do whatever I want. Oh, and that's freedom, my friends. But I hope today's episode was helpful, that you learned a little something, something, and that you can take action on Pinterest and growing your business with intention online. 
I'm cooking up something special for you next week, but until then, remember, every level of life is an opportunity to grow. Be well, my friend.